What's up guys? Welcome back to another Dr. Moby Motion tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lush, pretty stylized marble material in Blender Cycles. Now we're going to jump straight in, but if you support me on Patreon, you can click the link in the description and download the finished material which is ready to use in your scenes. Okay, first we're going to set up our scene so we can visualize the material nicely. If you just want to get straight to how to make the material, let's say you have a scene in mind already, you can skip to the next chapter uh, down below. I'm using Blender 3.0 just because screencast keys is broken later. You can definitely do this in 3.2, 3.3. Actually, the clip that I rendered that I showed you in the beginning is rendered in 3.3, so this works absolutely fine. You want to make sure that you set the render engine to cycles. If you're in a later version of Blender and you don't see this, you need to go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and Enable Cycles. And if you don't have it enabled already, you also want to enable the uh, Node Wrangler add-on, which I've enabled already. You can enable it by ticking it if you haven't already. If you have a GPU, you're going to switch this over to GPU Compute, so we get nice speedy rendering. We're going to delete the two objects, but we'll leave the camera. Now we'll press Alt-R and Alt-G to reset the rotation and location. We'll grab it in the Y axis with G and X, sorry, with G and Y. We'll rotate it 90 degrees in the X axis with R90. And let's add a torus because I think this visualizes the material really nicely. And under the settings, let's make it a little bit thicker. That's nice. We'll add a few more minus segments. So we'll double that number to 24. Let's shade smooth. We'll also add a subdivision surface just so that when we render this, it looks even smoother. And the default settings are fine. Now we're going to rotate it in the X axis 45 degrees with RX45. And we're going to get it to slowly spin around so we can see what this material looks like from all angles. We're going to use a driver for this. So in the rotation Z coordinate, type hashtag frame. This will use the frame information, so move it one degree every frame. That's too fast, so we'll divide it by 100. Now if you press space, you see this nice slow rotation over time. That just makes it look a bit more interesting. Now we'll press zero on the numpad to see what the camera sees. We're going to go into the world settings and add a nice HDRI for the background. So click on this yellow thing, environment texture, open. I'm going to navigate to where I've downloaded my Polyhaven HDRIs and I'll link to this specific one before. I'm going to be using Kaylee Interior. I really like the contrast in this image. And let's see what things look like at the moment. Before we go any further, let's save our file in case anything crashes where we start previewing the render. Let's press Ctrl and B and draw a big box around the entire camera. This just saves any rendering outside, which would be a waste of compute power. Once you've drawn the box, press Z and R to change the render mode to rendered. And this might take a few seconds, maybe a minute or two the first time you do this because it has to load the HDRI into memory. You can see the HDRI is there but the material is very plain at the moment. So we can get started with the material portion of the tutorial. Okay, so to start the material, we're gonna go into the shading view. Okay, and again, we're gonna press zero to go into the camera view. And we're not gonna go into rendered view just yet. We're gonna get started with the material so we don't bog down the computer too much. So with the Taurus selected, let's click New, and let's call this Lush Marble. 
And if you skipped forward, just make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled because we're gonna be using that. We're gonna press F3 to search. We're gonna search for a noise texture and we're gonna drop this in here. Now we press Control and T to add these uh, mapping coordinates. Now we're also gonna select these two. So shift and click the mapping and the noise texture nodes. Shift D to duplicate and we're gonna plop them in right here. This factor is gonna go into this vector and this generated is gonna go into here. So this first one didn't go through. And this trick of plugging a noise into another noise is a really nice trick, which I first learned from Syncretic 3D, but a few others use it as well. And it allows you to distort the coordinates of one noise texture which gives you more control over what it looks like. So we're gonna add a color ramp. So F3, search color ramp. This hurts the Brit in me spelling color wrong, but that's fine. Now we plug this factor into the factor and this color into the color. And let's see what this looks like. So you can start to see what this noise looks like. We're gonna bring this black up a little bit and this white down to give us a bit better contrast so we can better visualize the noise. And we're gonna go through and change these settings to look best. Uh, for the noise texture closest to the right, what I used is scale 3.7, detail 20, roughness 0.012, and distortion 0.2. And for this first one, scale 1.6, detail 15, and roughness 0.63, and then distortion 0.5. So these are the, these are the settings which I've used before. You can see it's starting to have the same uh, character as the marble we've had before. But you can go around and tweak these and see the effect they have. At the moment, I think these islands of white are too big. So white is where white's going to be and black is where blue, blue is going to be. I think this is too much black and not enough white. So we can change this around until the balance looks much better. And I think this is nice where it is. And let's change these settings really slowly just to look at the effect they have. So this changes the scale of the noise overall. I think 1.6 where it was is pretty nice. Detail I like to be very high as well. The roughness also has a big impact. So the best way to learn these things is to just use trial and error, just change it, look at the effect it has and pick something that you like. And actually I'm liking lower numbers than I had initially. So we're gonna keep this around 0.5 Three, two. So we'll stick to these settings. You can screenshot these if you want to use the exact same ones. And now let's get started with the blue material. So we're going to select this black at the bottom and click here and we're going to choose the uh, dark blue material. We're going to keep it nice and dark and we want a nice dark blue material. And if you want the exact material I used earlier, you can go into the hex and type in 1, 2, 1, D, 2, D. All the letters are capital. And this is the blue material which I had. I'm going to slide it up a little bit just to give us a bit more blue in there. And we're going to click plus to make a new lighter blue material in between the two. And we're going to use the exact same material I used earlier, which is 758DB6. And this is nice, but it's too much of this middle blue. So I'm going to slide this left closer to the first material. And that is looking much better. I think there's too much of the darkest blue. 
So we'll slide that over and the middle blue as well. Okay, I want a little bit more dark blue. I think that's nice. I think that's how I want the materials. So next, we're going to play with the roughness and the uh, displacement, or the normals actually, for the BSDF material to give it a bit more character and to get the surface looking a bit more realistic. To do this, we're actually going to disconnect this because I find the best way to visualize roughness and uh, normal maps is to change the color to dark black and turn the roughness down. Now we can see the surface really well, so we're going to make the displacement map for the normal map and then we'll, we'll move on to the uh, roughness. So, Control S to save your changes. We don't want Blender crashing and losing our progress. And F3 to search again, search for a bump. Let's plug this factor into the height and this normal into the normal. And you can see it has a surface now, but it's much too bumpy. So we'll turn this down very low. So 0 0.1, this looks nice. I wonder if we go even lower, 0.01. That's too little, so let's do 0 0.05, and this looks nice. And now we're going to disable this temporarily so we can make the roughness map, uh, and then we'll plug everything back in at the end. So for the roughness map, uh, for the roughness map, we're going to press F3 to search again, add another color ramp, uh, plug a factor in here and this color into the roughness. Now, if we look back at this material, so the whole thing is shiny now, which we don't want, I want the white bits to be the shiniest, which means a low roughness, which is dark, so black on a color ramp, and the blue parts, I want them to be rougher, so less shiny. So it's a little bit confusing because things have to flip around but I'm going to make this change first and then we'll take off this base color to see what it looks like and we can keep playing with it. So black is um, the most shiny and we're going to change the level of the most shiny because this looks too shiny at the moment. So we'll click on the black and go to HSV, hue saturation value. Here we can change the brightness without making it any color because the color doesn't matter. So we'll make this 0 0.1. Hmm, this still looks too shiny to me. I wonder if any, oh, that's because I've plugged color into the wrong place. So plug it into roughness. And you can see there are shiny bits and less shiny bits, that's perfect. And the shinier bits are the bits that we just changed to 0 0.1 and I think that looks good enough, it's not too shiny. So if you want to visualize that again, we can go back to zero, it's even shinier. So 0 0.1, it just takes a little bit of the edge off the shininess. Now for this white, I don't want it completely unshiny, I don't want it completely rough like this. So we'll turn this value down to, let's say 0 0.3. I think that works well, and I think that's what I used before. So we're going to keep those numbers, and we'll drag them around until we like the uh, surface, until we like what the surface looks like. And I think this is nice, maybe a touch more of the shinier, darker material. Okay. And now we're going to plug everything back in. So normal back into the normal. You can see the, the uh, surface bumpiness comes back. And the color back to the color and I'm just going to show you one like bonus tip if you're going to be using this in a scene with lots of objects so at the moment if you make two of these donuts with shift D uh, X axis you're going to notice that they look exactly the same so they have the exact same material but I don't I don't like that it's not very realistic so I'm going to show you a little trick to randomize the texture for every new object. We're going to add two nodes, an object info node and a vector math node. 
we're going to change this operation from addition to multiply and we're going to take this random and pass it in as the first vector and this vector is going to be passed into the location so that the two uh, like shift from each other and we're going to multiply it by let's say 10. So now this randomizes each object in your scene. So we can even duplicate this again. Oh, I've duplicated all four. But you can see that all four have a different texture to each other. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. I'm going to leave the finished node set up on the screen. So you can screenshot this and use that as a reference if you would like to. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you want to see more like this. This is my first materials tutorial in a while. So if you like this material and you want more like it, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And again, as a reminder to my lovely patrons, you can download the finished material, which will also be linked in the description. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time.